Father, this morning, help me pray. Father, this morning in Jesus' name, we understand Your Word according to Romans chapter 13, and You put in leadership, and You take out leadership. And so whoever You have in mind on the third, God, You put them in place, and we'll be satisfied in Jesus' name. Because we know that they are from God. And so we just ask You, Lord, to have Your way in our nation. But God, I pray in Jesus' name that we could learn how to love each other, that we could learn how to be free citizens of Jesus Christ. And God, stop looking to Washington for our answers and start looking towards heaven for our answer. Our answer does not come from men, but our answers come from God. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Move on our nation and move on our churches. Come on, help me guys, come on. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name to love each other. God, break down the divide. God, break down our racism, God, in Jesus' name. And help us to love people and love you with all of our heart and with all of our mind and with all of our soul. And God, will be quick to give you honor and praise for what you're going to do. God, help us November 4th to love each other. No matter who gets in office. And God, we love you. We bless you. We worship you in Jesus' holy name. And somebody said, Amen. High five your neighbor. Are you ready to give this morning? Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Are you ready to give? Y'all look tired this morning, like like you're out trick-or-treating. Bunch of, bunch of heathens. You ready to give this morning? Let's do it. Father, we love you. Take this tithe and take this offering and bless it so that more people might come to know Jesus. And we'll be quick to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. amen. Bless you this morning as you give. If you have your Bible this morning, turn with me to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 1, are you there? Father, as we're turning in our Bibles, as we're clicking on our phones, I pray, God, that you give us ears to hear what you're saying and give us a heart to receive in Jesus' name when somebody said amen. John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. And every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That word also prunes means cleanses. That it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. And the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and they throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so you will be my disciples. Verse 9, As the Father loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love, and if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Verse 11, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things I've heard from my Father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, 
and that whatever you ask in my Father's name, He will give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. He's talking this morning about fruit. What kind of fruit are we talking about? It's right living. It's right thinking. It's right giving. Come on. It's right relationships on your end. Because you can't control the relationship on the other end, but you can control it on your end. You can control what comes out of your mouth and what comes out of your heart, but you can't control because people are crazy. I love here because this really is a picture, and I've preached, I've preached John 15 a lot. I love this, this chapter. He's really talking about, he's saying, listen, his heart is saying, listen, I want you to be connected to Jesus. I want you to be connected to me. And without that connection, you will fail. And so he's saying, if we're connected to Jesus, everything will fall into right alignment. You know, when something's out of alignment, it doesn't go well. I had a car one time that I, for purposes of full disclosure, I hit a curb. And I hit it kind of hard. And, and it knocked my car out of alignment. And so I'd be going down Treckle, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour, you know, doing the speed limit. It depends on what part of Treckle. You don't know what part of Treckle I was on. Downtown. Anyway, when my car was out of alignment, it would... If I let off the steering wheel or I didn't hold pressure to it, it would immediately jerk the wheel and go to the left. I mean, it was way out of alignment. I had to, in fact, I had to drive like this to keep it going straight down the road because it was out of alignment. And what Jesus is talking about here is he's saying, if we don't stay connected to Jesus, we will be out of alignment and we will turn in places that we should not turn. I was listening to a, to a, to a, uh, a theologian this week, and, and I, I heard it this way, and I thought, oh, this is so good. He said, this connection to Jesus is manifested by obedience and prayer. To remain in Christ and to allow His words to remain in oneself means a consciousness to accept the authority of His word and a constant contact with Him by prayer. So I've got to stay, I've got to stay in constant contact with my Savior. And why wouldn't I want to anyway? If your prayer life is off, it affects the rest of your life spiritually. We're to remain in balance. There is a physical happening inside of our bodies called homeostasis. It is the balancing effect of our bodies that God created in our bodies. And so, for instance, our temperature this morning, if we're healthy... Our temperature should be somewhere, and it varies. It varies with, with people. Some people are colder. Some people are hotter. Um, but, but the average temperature for a human being is about 98.6. And your body has a mechanism, and is it called homeostasis, that will do its best to regulate your temperature so that you could remain balanced. There's another mechanism of homeostasis in your body that creates a certain level of pH or alkalinity in your, in your body that, ke that keeps your body at a certain pH level. And if it gets out of balance, you'll have infections and all kinds of different things that will manifest in your body because your body is what the doctor would say, out of balance. So how do you know when there's something wrong? When you are sick, okay... Let's talk about the coronavirus for just 10 seconds. What is the first thing they do when they check you? They check your temperature. Because they want to see, is there something that's in your body that is out of balance? That is a, that is a, 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 a place or an instrument of measure. I want to see if you're out of balance. And so Jesus is saying here in John 15 that if you're not connected to me, then you're out of balance and you're not connected. You're, you, you have to stay connected because if, if, if you're not connected to me, then nothing is going to go right. 
So we're to remain in balance. We're supposed to remain We're not supposed to be too high and we're not supposed to be too low. And I feel like sometimes we have bipolar Christians. You know what? I'm tired of bipolar Christians. Up one day and down the next. Could we just... I believe that if we stay connected to Jesus... It's quiet in here this morning. Maybe y'all didn't get enough sugar last night. I don't know. We should be able to, we should be able to, as Christians, check your temperature and it should stay the... You ever know those people that you don't know what you're going to get when they come in? You just, oh, I wonder what they're going to be like today. We shouldn't be that way. Because the world is looking to us for answers in this time. And if we're crazy, and we're the ones that have the answers, prayer and worship and service and sacrifice and giving and gathering as believers... If you're not connected to Jesus, then it will affect every area of your life. And we've got to be so, so careful. How do we connect? We connect, number one, by prayer. Talking with God every day to cultivate that relationship. And hopefully in that time of prayer, you're doing this. You're praying out loud, but you're also shutting up. Prayer, prayer isn't just you talking. Part of prayer is listening to say, okay, I've I poured out my heart, Jesus. Now you pour out your heart for me. Reading his word daily, not because I have to, not because my pastor told me to, but because I want to see what he has to say towards me. In my giving to God, number three, this releases us from selfishness. It's quiet in here. It releases God's blessing on our lives because it's a matter of the heart, not the checkbook. Attending church faithfully, number four, hearing God's word preached and being around other believers is vital to our walk. Somebody told me this morning, I watch it on video every now and then, but I there's nothing like coming into the building and coming in and being around people. We do it, and thousands of people lately are watching our videos. Thousands. But it's still not the same. You've got to be, we, we as believers were created to be connected, connected to Jesus and connected to each other. That's why this virus has taken such a toll. Do you realize this virus has taken such a toll, not just on, our, not just on the 200 and some thousand people who have died? And the people who, and the millions of people who have gotten sick, it's taken a toll because we have because we're no longer connected like the way that we were. I, I think I might be maybe maybe you do this too, but when you have to wear a mask into the store, they won't let you into the store. You know the mask. So I, I wear this mask when I go into Lowe's. And when I'm walking by people, I'm used to I'm used to being friendly. Come on, and I smile at everybody when I walk by. Well, here I'm here here dumb me with this big old mask on. I'm So the other day I'm walking through Lowe's with my boys and I'm like, "Your dad's a dummy." They're like, "Why, dad?" I'm like, "I'm smiling at everybody still and nobody sees my nobody seen my face in months." Do you do that too? Catch yourself smiling underneath your mask and they can't see nothing but your eyeballs. Hopefully my eyes show it. You know what I'm saying? But we're supposed to be, or I just want to, or or some people will take their mask down. (laughs) 
I was at a restaurant the other day, and they said, oh, we have to wear these masks. And, and you couldn't understand them when they talked, and so the waiter would put their, mask, they put their mask down, and they'd talk to you, and then they'd walk away, they'd put it back up again. Whatever. But, but it feels weird. Doesn't it feel a little bit disconnected because you can't see people's face? And I take a lot off of people's faces. Not just their eyes, but their faces. And we're supposed to, we were made, we were made to connect to each other. We were made, we were, I shouldn't say this to all of my viewers today, but we weren't made to watch videos from home. We were made for koinonia. We were made for connection. We were made, we were made to get around each other. And, and I feel like, I feel like that this, this virus is, yes, it's taken a lot from us, but you know what? It's taken a lot of our connectivity from us. And we need to learn how to connect. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said, my kids haven't been out since January of the house. And I thought, oh my goodness, the emotional toll that it's going to take on those children for not being able to be out of their house and play with their friends and, and to socialize and be around people. I thought, oh my goodness, what a tragedy that is. I have people in our church who haven't come to church and will not come to church until this thing is over. And I understand their fear. I understand they're, they're full of fear. But I'm thinking, but you're missing. You're missing out on life. And part of life is being connected to Jesus, but being connected to each other. That's why he inextricably says it together. What's the greatest commandment? That you love your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your soul. And in the same breath, he says, and love your neighbor as yourself. We're inextricably linked to Jesus and each other. And we can't get out of this world without each other. We need each other. That's why I've refused to put anything political on my Facebook pages. Because I have friends who are Democrats and I have friends who are Republicans. And my place, my place in the pulpit is to preach Jesus, not a political candidate. If you want to know what my political stance is, ask me after church. But I'm not going to stand up here and politicize my pulpit for the price of... Because this pulpit will still be here irregardless of who gets voted in on the 4th. Or the 3rd or whenever it's going to happen. And so we have to look. I need to stay connected to you. And listen, if I can't... If I'm not connected to you... Okay, talking about connectivity... If I was to stand up here and rate and, and, and be irate about Donald Trump or Joe Biden, I would offend automatically half of you. Because half of you are probably for one guy and half of you are probably for the other guy. Hello? And if I offend you, then I can't speak into you. And is it my job to speak into you about the Lord Jesus? Now I do understand there are certain times that I will take a, a, a stand and I will, but I don't need to do it behind here because this is a sacred desk for Jesus, not... Come on. I, I love verse 9 when he says that the Father loved me and I so love you. The Father loved the Son with the love that, listened to me, has no beginning... And it has no end. It's close and it's personal. It's without measure and it's unchanging. Aren't you thankful that God, that God loved Jesus that much that was without beginning, without end? It was close, it was personal, it was without measure and it's unchanging. But then you also have to understand that Jesus is saying that He loved me this way and I love you that way too. That I love you so much, Jesus says, that my love for you has no beginning and my love for you has no end and my love for you is close and personal and my love for you is without measure and my love for you is unchanging. Don't you like that this morning? And so why wouldn't we want to stay connected to a God like that, to a Savior like that? And he's talking a whole lot about uh, obedience. Look at verse 15. 
Go with me to verse 15. No longer do I call you servants because the servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things I've heard from my father I have made known to you. He's talking about obedience. Listen to this. I, I read this this week and I thought, O-M-G. No one is more miserable than the Christian who for a time avoids obedience. Listen to me. He does not love sin enough to enjoy its pleasures and does not love Christ enough to relish holiness. Let me say that again. He does not love sin enough to enjoy its pleasures and does not love Christ enough to relish holiness. He perceives that his rebellion is wrong, but obedience seems distasteful. Therefore, he's miserable. He does not feel at home any longer in the world, but his memory of past associations and the tantalizing lyrics of his old music prevent him from singing with the saints. He's a man to be most pitied and a man most miserable. Because I don't want to obey, but yet I don't want to sin, and so... I, 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 no longer, I no longer enjoy the pleasures of sin, but I don't really want to obey, and so I'll stay something like Revelation says, Jesus is speaking to His people, and He's saying, I wish that you'd either be hot nor cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Another word, a spew, means vomit you out of my mouth. And so He's saying, listen, that we're, we're, there's these fence walkers, and you can't walk the fence forever because you'll... Be miserable. So why don't you just come on the Lord's side and stay on His side? He doesn't love sin enough to enjoy its pleasure, but doesn't love Christ enough to relish holiness. Huh. Last verse. Isaiah chapter 43. Verse 18. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. He's saying, forget your past. Forget it. Forget about it. You don't live there no more. So why do you keep rehearsing what, what was or what should have been or what could have been? Stop living there in the past. It will keep you disconnected. And it will keep you disconnected from the Lord and it will keep you disconnected from people. Because you keep rehearsing. Why would you continue to rehearse the past if it was that good? Nor consider the things of old. He's saying, listen, you got to set your mind. And you know, I, I find it cool when Isaiah wrote that in the 43rd chapter. He says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Why would Isaiah say that? Because he knew it would be easy for us to live in the past. Isaiah wouldn't have said it if he didn't know that people would live it. There comes a time in your life when you have to reconcile and say, you know what, it sucked. I'm going to cry about it and I'm going to get over it. I'm going to dust myself off and I'm going to get up again. I can't live there anymore. And I have to continue to, I have to walk away. Okay, it was bad. It was horrible. It was, 
I, I love counselors, and I think there's a wonderful place for them in certain areas and arenas. But I, I, I get frustrated because they want us to always go back and relive our past. You know, the problem I have with AA and NA and OA and BA and CA and, and I'm going to join TA. <laughs> I'm going to join Tacos Anonymous. It's just a bunch of group. We just get together and we eat tacos and we don't tell each other each other's name. I'm, <laughs> I want to be a part of that group. I don't know about you. Huh? In fact, my first meeting is going to be right after this. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> But the problem, part of the problem I have with that is, is when you sit around in the circle and they say, Hi, my name is Diamond Compa and I'm an alcoholic. I had to pick on you this morning, Curly. You can't define me by what I used to be. Why do you keep putting labels... Why don't, you, why don't you sit around the table and tell me who you are now, not what you have been? I asked somebody recently, I said, how long have you been going and how long have you been in recovery? And how long have you been going? To, I've been going for 25 years. I said, wow. I said, when's the last time you had a drink? 25 years ago. I said, and you still call yourself an alcoholic? And then immediately this begins to pop up in my mind. You think, do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of... Okay, what if we... Oh, well, Pastor, you just don't understand addiction. Oh, no, I understand it better than you think I do. So why don't we walk around and say, Hi, my name is Matt Eden, and I'm a thief. Hi, my name is Marie Pena. And I'm angry. <laughs> My name is Roy Edwards. I'm, an ex I'm a drug dealer. My name is Jim Bob Jones and I'm a pervert. But why do we do that for just addictions? If we're going to label people, why don't we label people then? I'm Jesus. I love Jesus, right? I, I, I'm D. I I love Jesus. Right? I love my husband. I love my kids. Right? Why? Why don't we start? Why don't we start? Why don't we start talking about who we're connected to, and what we're connected to, instead of what we're trying to disconnect from? Listen to me. Hi, my name is Roy Edwards, and I'm an addict. No, I am not in Jesus' name. Jesus broke those chains and I am no longer the same. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to accept your label, your worldly label to me. Besides, when Jesus calls my name, He doesn't call me by my addiction. He doesn't call me by my sin. He calls me by my name. Jesus doesn't call me by what I'm conflicted by. He calls me by my name. He says Roy. And he doesn't even call me pastor. Because that's a man-made title. Oh, my Savior. He whispers to me and says, Roy, my son. What if we, called, what if we looked at our children? And we called them by what they do. <sighs> Hello, Jonathan, Mr. Disobedient. <laughs> Hello, Jordan, you little talky thief. Because he's always searching for talkies in our house. Little talky thief. He had a little girl in grade school that used to bring him talkies every single day. He used to come home. We used to pick him up from the bus or pick him up from the school. And he used to have a big old ring of talkie juice all around his face. I'm like, where did you get those? Oh, some girl brought them to me. You know.
You got to watch those girls, Ryan. You got to watch those girls who give you talkies. You got to watch them. Girls who give talkies away have cooties. I just need to tell you that. Because, listen to me, because our label connects us, a label is a connection. I call my wife, I call my wife a lot of things, but I call my wife, I call my wife Sweet Pea. I call her baby. I call her the things I'm connected to with her. My, my love. I, I call her those things because that's what I'm connected to. I'm not connect, See, we have to be careful what we connect ourselves to. And what we allow labels to do. If we do it for people with addiction, then why don't we do it for us that have sins, to, that have other kinds of sins? Or instead, why don't we just stop with the labels? And why don't we just call each other by each other's name? Because we're not supposed to remember the former things and remember the things of old. He says, behold, I will do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? And he gives that question, and it's rhetorical in nature, but it's really, but it kind of isn't. He says, Shall you not know it? Meaning that you have the ability to miss it. He could do something new, but you could miss it. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a roadway in the, in the wilderness and rivers in the desert even if we have to call it the CAP Canal. So I don't know about you, but I want to see God do a new thing in me. And the only way that God could do a new thing in me is if I stay connected to Him. And if I stay connected to the process of, of prayer, of worship, of service, of sacrifice, of attendance, of being a part and connected to the body, I can't, I, can't expect, I can't expect to have the blessings of the head if I'm not connected to the foot. And so I've got to, I've got to how do I stay connected? And how do, I get, how do I get away from my past? Because my past can't define me. I think it's a tragedy. And I don't know the answer. But I think it's a tragedy. I was thinking this morning about people who are incarcerated and they're always considered ex-cons. Why do we label them that? Because that stigma will follow them all the days of their life. And I understand very well that, that, that actions have consequences. But why do we continue to label? Are you Republican or are you Democrat? I'm Christian. Hello? Because hasn't it been the labels that have divided us? Isn't it the labels who are dividing us? Blue drives down the road with his Trump stuff on, his cars, and, and sometimes he gets thumbs up and sometimes he gets another finger. Why did we ever have to... What? If we're to love each other, then why are we flipping each other off? If you like Trump or like Biden or... Who cares? At the end of the day, Jesus isn't going to say to me, Pastor Edwards, did you vote for Trump or Biden in 2020? But some of us would like to make Donald Trump our God. He's the Savior of the United States. And if he don't get elected, oh my God. This world is going to go to hell in a handbasket. Oh, so you don't trust in your God.
if Trump, if if Biden gets, I've seen it all over because I, I I'm friends with thousands of people, and 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 somebody if 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 Biden doesn't get elected, our our world will never be this. So Jesus is no longer on in control. And God the Father and God the Son are standing at the balcony of heaven looking over the United States and they're wringing their hands going, I wonder who they're going to elect. And you know what? If so-and-so gets in there, we could breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> Every... <sighs> oh, God the Father, we sure did miss a big one there, didn't we? Well, in four years, let's see, let's see who's going to get it now. Because <sighs> I don't believe for a second that God is in heaven wringing his hands over our election. I believe on November 4th, we need to look towards heaven, whoever is elected, and go, oh my God. We need to look to you in this hour and not in men and not in people. You see, we've gotten in this mess because we have looked to people too long. And your Bible says not to trust in men and not to trust in princes and not to trust in horses and the not to trust in chariots and not to trust in anything but our Savior Jesus. And so why would we ever, if we want to stay connected, then we've got to stop labeling each other and we've got to start loving each other. Because the world is dying and going to hell and we are hope dispensers. Come on, somebody. And we have to be, but we can't give someone hope if we're bound by our past and we're not connected to our Savior. Because we'll be that miserable person who doesn't love sin enough to enjoy its pleasures, but we don't love Jesus enough to relish holiness because we're too busy being labeled or we're too busy labeling other people. The other day I was filling out some paperwork for my mom, for, for her, her doctor, and, and it came to the race section and I wanted, to put, I wanted to put something creative on there just for fun. You know, she's white as the driven snow, you know, and... And so it said, are you African American? Are you Native Alaskan? Are you, are you Latino? Are you? And I wanted to check all the boxes. I wanted to put, yeah, she's. Right? Let's stop with the labels. And let's just love each other. Stop with, stop with the R or the D and just love each other. Father, I love you today. I bless you. Thank you for what you're doing in our nation. Thank you that you're breathing on your church today. Thank you that you're touching us. Help us, oh God, to stay connected to you and then to each other. Help us, God, to no longer be defined by our past, but by what you're causing us to be. And that's true followers of Jesus. Help us to get rid of the labels and just love each other. Help us to get rid of the labels and accept our freedom that is found only in Jesus. God, I'll be quick to give you love. I'll be quick to give you honor. I'll be quick, God, to give you praise for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, I pray with your heads bowed. Whether you're here or you're watching my video this morning, I just want to ask maybe... You've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But today you say, Pastor, today I need to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I need to invite Him into my heart. If that's you, would you just pop your hand up right where you are? I want to pray for you this morning. This is what I want you to do. Would you just repeat this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to accept me to forgive me of all of my sins and help me follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You received that this morning. Amen.
Amen. Do me a favor. Love on somebody, would you? <laughs>